There are estimates by year 2020, we'll have between 40 billion and 200 billion connected devices. Uh, there will be 10 million RFID chips produced, 10 billion every year, uh, put in the clothing and different objects. Machine to machine data will comprise 900,000 terabytes a month. Uh, to give you some clue of how much that is, the entire Library of Congress is 20 terabytes. So that's how much just machines talking to each other and not humans will comprise. And my favorite statistic is the size of the Internet of Things market will range between $1.7 trillion and $19 trillion by the year 2020. So the answer is nobody knows how big this thing is. Well, we know it's pretty big. Because we all have smartphones, as do probably most people in the world at this point, the construction of that smartphone has gotten really cheap. And what the smartphone really makes it sort of smart is that it has these um, things called MEMS, M-E-M-S. And they're actually, they actually move, and they detect things like temperature and air pressure, and they're like accelerometers and gyroscopes, and they do all sorts of things. And there's many, many different types of sensing devices, and increasingly they're put in smartphones. So what the Internet of Things is really is just connectivity of things, where we started out being connected as people, then people were connected with things. Now it's really the Internet of everything. When we think about IoT, we think about the, what is it going to mean to my person? personal, individual life. However, I think that the implications for cities um, are almost bigger than just the impact for us individually. Uh, IoT can create a 30% decrease in traffic. And if any of you drove in Washington, D.C. yesterday morning, that the, the, a three-block radius being closed down crippled downtown Washington. And so being able to use data and analytics to analyze traffic patterns, to connect people and join them in ridership, um, creates massive, massive improvements. I think ultimately, if we fast forward to five or 10 years, it's going to be a much more effective and user-friendly um, individual citizen to government experience. GM today, how many have a GM car with OnStar on it? Show of hands, anybody? OnStar is in, in almost 20 million cars now, and that reports directly to GM headquarters in Detroit whether your car has had an accident, whether the airbag has gone off. It's not private information. I, I mean, some people think everything that you have should be private unless you give permission. Well, whether you're going over a pothole and whether or not your windshield wipers are going or whether your car is in a car accident, it should not be private information, in my view, because society can benefit from it. An example that really irritates me is that the University of Florida had a longitudinal study of 10,000 pair of eyes from older people. And it's simply numbers. There was no names attached to it, really. It was just the, the dimensions and some vital statistics and what they ate. Well, the president of the university decided you had to throw out that data because it violated HIPAA, because you did not get the permission of these people, most of whom were old and dead and were unable to be, give permission. Um, so they, that element of science was thrown away. So HIPAA is an example which had a great idea that has some really bad results. And my hope with the Internet of Things is that HIPAA is not our model. That common sense and balancing off real good privacy concerns against real good public interest and health concerns, and we make reasonable decisions and we have the type of discussion we're talking about. I, I don't disagree, first of all, with your assessment of HIPAA. HIPAA was a 10,000-page regulation that, in some cases, didn't really make anybody's privacy any stronger, just like some other things that have happened in the government space. But we do need some awareness of the individual sense of self and their sense of their relationship to their data. I take your point, and again, having worked at GE, which is largely in the industrial internet as opposed to the personal internet, um, there are differences and there are hierarchies of, just as you point out to Maslow's hierarchy, there are hierarchies of data, and that's recognized in most parts of the world already, that there's highly sensitive data, there's kind of medium sensitive, personally identifiable data, and then there's data about the structure, the system, the, 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 the device. I think that you're right, good, logical, thoughtful laws and companies can make a difference but, and, and really differentiate between those different kinds of, of information. However, there are the possibilities of combining different data sets in ways that become personally identifiable or that can infer information about an individual. And we're concerned at CDT not only about the data itself, obviously, and the collection and use and dissemination and protection, cyber, obviously, security, and the system is incredibly important as part of the ecosystem of data. We're concerned about the decision. 
what is the government going to decide about me based on the inference of where I went shopping yesterday and where I live and where I send my, school, my kids to school? Um, what is the company going to decide? As we get better and better about personalizing based on all the sensors and based on all the, the, the data bits that we're leaving out there in the world, your worldview, in a world where the internet should be one that's broadening and bringing you more information and bringing you into connection with people all around the world, are we creating internet bubbles, right? Are we creating a smaller and smaller ecosystem around which everybody on Facebook I agree with, you know, or everybody thinks the same way, or I'm not exposed to new and different thought? I, I, I worry that we are unintended, you know, through the unintended consequences of decision, automated decisioning, making people's world smaller when we could make them bigger. I would love to see other ways of doing things, for example, for security as to what, and you know, dealing with terrorism. There's ways of, 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 with facial identification, with doing things that have to get better. We want, I want them to get better. And yes, will they impinge on privacy? Well, it's okay to impinge on privacy in certain high-risk areas like airports and maybe in buildings like this one and things like that because there has to be a better way. So it will be better. There's issues involving the future of work. There's issues involving transportation and healthcare and agriculture and medicine, but it will be a better world but there'll also be bad people in it, and we have to deal with that. And it's going to be a, a continuous effort to stay ahead of the bad guys. As a business organization, I think the relationships with our customers are going to be strengthened as a result of this technology. If you fundamentally know your customers better, you're able to better serve them. There's a, gr there's a, a greater sense of loyalty. I think as a citizen and as a mom of a seven-month-old little girl, uh, I think that our relationship with government is going to be quite different. And I think perhaps more effective from a lo at a, a local level. I think you're gonna see more efficiency. I think if my, if my sidewalks can communicate to DC that they need to be shoveled when it snows, that's really good, so I don't have to go out there and shovel it. It could be whether it's potholes, whether it's helping to identify waste, fraud, fraud and abuse. There's all, there's a, we, we don't even know all the possibilities there, but boiling it back down to relationships, I think are gonna be fundamentally very, very different. And I think some of the greatest benefits that we have to look forward to in the next decade are actually going to be at the lower ends of the income scale and that it's going to, it's going to be an income equalizer. Uh, and I say that because when you think about the opportunities in health to be able to bring top health care to rural communities, to poor communities in ways that we've never envisioned before, in education, to be able to tailor specific educational um, programs for individual children that would help lower income kids who never had access to it before, that this is really a tremendous opportunity for um, leapfrogging using technology in ways that can really benefit all of society. So I'm so mindful of my former boss, Jeff Bezos at Amazon, who used to say, we are still on day one. And in fact, our headquarters building was called Day One North. We are still at day one of the internet. So we are still, for those of you who feel, oh, it's hopeless, all my data's out there, or these decisions are already made, I think that's wrong. I think we are, we are now at the very, still at the dawn of this digital age where we can make really intelligent decisions as a society. I'd say that we will be still a little bit in turmoil 10 years from now because 10 years, although it's a very, very long time in the evolution of innovative technologies, it is unfortunately a very short time in the policy development world that we all have lived in for many decades. Um, it, you know, it's a, it's a truism to say that the law is not keeping up with technology. I actually have great hope. Again, I really do. And, and if you look at the decisions coming out, for example, of the U.S. Supreme Court, of all of the places in the, in the great work the FTC is doing, certainly, and, and others, but in all of the branches of government, the court is getting this right. And the court is applying fundamental principles of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and human dignity and saying, just because the technology has advanced and can do that doesn't mean we should. But uh, you know, really, really thinking about what renegotiating the boundaries of the self to the world in the digital age. And I, I have great hope. We will still be in this conversation, and some of us may still even be in these jobs having this conversation, <laughs> um, but we will, be, we will be on the right path. We will try a few things going in the wrong direction first, but we'll, we will get there. <laughs>